Yeah, yeah, what's up, peeps? I know I've been away for a bit, but, um, like I said, I got a new job, and that's going well, so I'm just getting adjusted to the new time, but it's back on the money time, and it's spring, going into summer, and most of us are more social, so I'm going to talk today, speak about dating, and basically 10 questions that you should know, or you should, I feel you should ask a potential partner. Um, and my co-host is going to be this guy today. This is Angel Sheridan out of drag. <laughs> right? Look, see? Alright. So let's just get into the money. Um, I, I made a little list because there's things I don't want to forget, and... These are not in any specific order of importance, but I feel an important question to ask. And remember my prior video spoke about that I wouldn't call it dating. I actually prefer you going out and having coffee so you could, you know, start conversing and get a better idea because if you don't like the person, uh you're going to have a hard time finishing your meal. <laughs> oh, they said, I can have a go bag. Yeah. So. But it's good to spend good quality time getting to know them, you know, thoroughly before you even proceed further. All right. So I feel the first question you should ask should be, what are you looking for? Or what are your intentions? Because it cuts the bullshit. You know what I mean? If someone's looking for mere um, sexual uh, intentions, or if they have sexual intentions, then they, you might know off the bat that this is something that you might not want if you're a person seeking um, a romantic relationship, longevity, building friendship, etc., etc. Okay? I feel that's the important question. What do you want? What do you want from me? So, alright. Uh, number two is... Do you have any communicable, uh, communicable diseases? And Wendy Williams, back when she was on uh, the radio, um, she said, you have all the right to ask someone this question. Um, because, you know what? It might um, change things, but rather know off the bat, What's going on in your body? What do you have? If it's treatable, where's your status? Are you receiving treatment for it? Et cetera, et cetera. Because there are a lot of um, diseases out there, like uh, not only HIV and AIDS, okay, but we know there's other diseases like TB, um, HSV type 2, which is herpes uh, simplex virus, the one below the waist, and... Um, yeah, so I feel you should be able to ask the person. And I guess in a more indirect way would be asking them, uh, saying, hey, would you ever date someone who is positive or has X, Y, and Z? Da, 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 da. Some people might be a little concerned or, or set back that they're being asked this, you know, because a lot of people sometimes don't like disclosing your status. But I feel it's kind of mandatory um, by, well, the DOH says that, you know, you have to reveal it because if you're holding back this information and you proceed to have sexual relationships, number one, I feel that's, that's really sucky that you're, you know, high, uh, not disclosing that information, okay? All right, so that's number two. The third one is, are you presently employed or what do you do? We shouldn't judge someone by their, you know, their general occupation. However, if someone is a deadbeat and not ambitious and you're someone who's up here and you're striving for, you know, the things that you want, the goals, and you're so career-oriented, and that other person is more, I guess, more um, comfortable with making a less income or on public assistance or don't have no, no drive, and then that person might not be ideal for you because you are going to be having to pay the bill all the time. Yeah, so, um, 
Now, if they're not presently employed, okay, which is understandable, the economy, etc., etc., it would be great to know that if they're uh, currently matriculated in school, which is good, you know, they're doing something, um, or if they're interning, or if they're making an adamant decision of going out there and doing something, as opposed to watching all those uh, Bad Girl series, right? Or True Blood, or they're just home on Facebook doing nothing with their lives, okay? Fourth question is, and which is so important, is when was your last relationship? Now, I feel it's imperative to know this because there might be still emotional issues that they're getting over. And number one, you don't want to be a rebound. And number two, you don't want no ex drama, you know? And what sucks might be if they are someone that you're getting to know and then the ex shows up because their, uh, their last relationship was not too long ago and then they leave you and go back with their ex. That's very likely. So watch for the red flags as far as um, how long ago was their relationship with their ex. And then I feel you should ask them how long was that relationship for and why did they break up and what would your ex say about you if your ex was here? What would they say? So I think, you know, they might lie. However, it's just good that you're, you're getting it out there. You're, you're asking them. So that's a really good question to ask. Okay, um, uh, the next question, number five, is very important to me, and it's just a matter of, um, compatibility, and it's, do you believe in God, do you believe in higher power, spirituality, etc., etc., um, I feel that having a belief system gives someone conviction, um, and it's that they realize and they understand that these things in life are governed or by a greater power or and the, the consequences of doing negative things um, or just having a standard of morale could be centered around a belief system. Okay, that's very important to me. Um, okay, number six. Are you out... That's a big one because think about if someone who is in the closet and all the restrictions that they, they, they put around their lives, the barriers, uh, as opposed to someone who is, girl, I'm coming out. Exactly, you see, total, total, you know, difference with someone who is very proud of who they are, um, is out and about and they don't, they're here and they're queer and they're gay, and they're here to stay, etc., etc. Um, then the uh, next question is to ask around this, are you out? Is, um, are you out to your, you know, to your family, or which members, and, like, maybe the nuclear, which is, uh, most important to a lot of people, which is mom, dad, you know, siblings? And how long have you been out? And, um, are you comfortable being, uh, identifiably gay person? Okay. Um, okay, and around this topic, you know, about being out, it comes to be a subtopic is, um, do you believe in PDA, public display of affection? Because for some people, you know, they're very much into romance, like holding hands, you know, kissing in public. I'm not talking about sucking face, but, um, uh, you know, a little tap here, showing, showing affection. Okay, so what's their stance on that? Okay, and um, now this whole umbrella of being gay, you know, are like, are you bisexual or are you gay? What is it? Because there are some men who, or some women who might feel insecure with having a partner who uh, also likes having sexual relationships uh, with a person of the opposite sex. Okay, all right, moving on. Um, number seven, which is, um, it's a, it's a good question. It kind of sounds like maybe a human resources question. Tell me about your, no, okay. It's, um, something difficult you had to overcome. I think that's a great question because 
it shows you how they manage problems or how they manage things, uh, conflict or external stimuli that are, um, that's coming to them. You know, some people might, you know, medicate themselves. Well, that's another whole different topic. Um, yeah. So, basically, it's something that they had to overcome. And you, it's really getting to know them. It's, I guess that's sort of like a very personal question to them. All right. Uh, number, I guess, I lost count. <laughs> I would say nine. Uh, do you believe in same-sex matrimony? That kind of resolves around the question about being, you know, um, about being out and, you know, but nowadays, thank and thankfully that we are able to have um, relationships which are um, recognized by uh, law, by a government. So, do you believe in same-sex marriage? Um, because someone might be looking for the whole, you know, white picket fence, two and a half kids, um, <laughs> the whole, the whole shebang. So, it kind of shows their, their long-term goal, their perspective, if they're, they believe in having a, a family system if they want the same thing. Okay. Um, I think this is number 10. Okay, okay. <sighs> Do you partake in any illicit drug use? Now, I don't believe anybody really asks this anymore, but there might be persons out there who are constant drug users. You know, they might um, use party drugs, you know, cocaine, K, which is ketamine, G, um etc etc and if you're not a person who is into this type of you know party and play lifestyle etc etc these might be or that might be a huge downfall or setback finding out later that this part of uh, person you are um that you're getting to know is into those things you know um and you should bring up you know about consumption of alcohol or if they smoke marijuana etc etc because there are some people who feel that these um, things are vices and in compatibility you know might mm, not be on the same page as far as you know, that, that goes um, and about meeting someone um, in like a social setting like a club whatever I feel you should kind of restrain your conversation for an opportunity where you can get to um, speak to them without, you know, blasting music or them being, um, you know, partially uh, intoxicated or, you know, because alcohol is a social lubricant. So the person who you might be meeting, and if you're into someone who's more, you know, extroverted and, and not really reserved or quiet, they might be this whole person that's out and about and not actually giving a, a great representation of who they are, which is more important than them depicting this person at the club. You know what I mean? All right. And um, last, but it tends to be sort of like a criteria in gay relationships is that what sexual role do you favor? Okay. Um, and I feel this is an important question because there are certain persons who might be one thing, but when they're in a long-term or committed relationship, they might be more open to exploring further, um, further dynamics of sexuality and intimacy. Do I need to explain? Okay, if somebody's a, uh, a top or they might um, they might be saving it for a long-term relationship where they're more likely to feel more comfortable and want to give their bodies away to a, a partner as opposed to it being just casual sex and that's not something that they want to do. So maybe speaking about that um, 
But I suggest not throwing it in there immediately because it kind of shows that, you know, you have no depth as, you know, sex is important. So it's good to talk about it. Um, but I feel it's not the most imperative topic as compared to the list. And here is a very important one. So we'll call this uh, question uh, bonus points. Can you cook? Well, you know, a way to a man's heart is through his pants, I mean, stomach. <laughs> Oops. Alright, so these are 10 questions. I feel they're great dating questions. So let me know what you think. If you have any other questions that you want to um, throw out there. And I know I messed up with the, uh, the chronological order, so get over it. Alright, so from Mr. Fuzzy and um, this guy. What's your name, Biatch? <laughs> um, we'll call him Floopy. He's a Floopy. Okay. So, mucho lavo, dresses, and for all those of you who are new, welcome to the family, and let's bro, dresses, <laughs>